the Bible says the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and a horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Join us every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media and Spreaker Radio of the Pearls of Veronica. As her guests share their journey, as they try to accept their loss, they come together for transparency and comfort. Join us right now, right here on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, Veronica, you are live. Hey, Veronica, are you connected? You're not on mute, are you? Because I see you in the queue. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, cue me in. You're ready. You're live. Good evening and welcome to Pearls with Veronica. I'm your host, Veronica Brown, on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. Tonight, my guest is Elizabeth. E for exuberant, enterprising. Elizabeth is an executive, a motivator, a baker, singer, confident, and excellent mom, Elizabeth E. Good evening, Elizabeth. Are you on? I am on. Okay. And welcome, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you on tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the invite. Thank you for accepting as well. We all know that Grief is a natural response to a loss, usually associated with emotional suffering following the loss of a loved one. Coping with loss can be one of life's biggest challenges. It is normal to grieve, and it's important to understand some of the unexpected emotions that we may feel experiencing during the grieving process, such as shock, anger, disbelief, guilt, or profound sadness. I've experienced all of those. Grief can also disrupt your physical health, which may make it difficult to sleep, eat, or even think straight. Grief fog. Elizabeth, I'm going to call you E. (laughs) I like E. Tell us who you are and what you do. So I go by E. Makes it a lot easier. Um, As you said, Uh, I am, first and foremost, a mom. Um, I am a provider for my children, my boys. Uh, I'm an executive in the healthcare IT space. And uh, my life is uh, full of trials and triumphs. Tell us, in reading, um, I read that your son's father passed away due to a a motorcycle accident. Yeah, that's correct. Tell us about, is it Devon or Devin? Devin. So his name was Devin Jones. Yes. Devin. Tell us about Devin and how did you all meet? Uh, So Devin uh, was a very vibrant and um, kind of the light of the room so to speak, person. Um, I met him by chance uh, just in our local community. Um, 
and he was somebody that I kept bumping into and um, don't live in a, in a, you know, like a densely populated area, but certainly not like in the country. Um, so bumping into people is not kind of not, not normal, but I thought it was quite strange that I kept bumping into him. Um, nonetheless, uh, short conversation, small conversation, um, and decided reluctantly to, to entertain a, a date offer from him, um, where <laughs> I, I learned quite a bit about him, and we had a lot in common. Um, we were both very uh, energetic. Um, we both loved sports, uh, particularly football. Uh, we both had a very strong family um, foundation. Family is very, very important to us. Um, that was, you know, really the the beginning. Um, I had actually taken a step away from um, the church and religion, and uh, Devin was uh, very much involved in the church, so he actually uh, reintroduced me to to the Lord and um, to the Word and um, you know the the beginning and entirety of our relationship was was around the church. So he reintroduced you to to the fellowshipping of God and and back into the Word of God. Absolutely. And that's very important in the relationship. That's very, very important in a relationship. What? Yeah, ab- absolutely. <laughs> because grief work is intense, how have you managed to take time out for E? Um, yeah, so it's interesting. You know, uh, people lose loved ones in, in a multitude of, uh, of ways, and sometimes it's it's seen and known and, and expected, and, and in my case, um, well, quite the opposite, um, very sudden, unexpected, um, so quite tragic. Um, so I lived in a fog for a long time, um, for about a year, from what I can piece together, um, the first year was, was quite foggy. Um, it wasn't until after I started coming out of that fog and kind of realizing my purpose and realizing um, really the, the profound nature behind, you know, my, my existence was um, to lead by example and um, to demonstrate to my boys um, how, to, how to thrive uh, past those those types of challenges and um and I, I know it sounds probably weird but uh the things that I saw as hobbies um I really drove into so um you listed that I'm a baker um so <laughs> that was one of the things that I actually got into quite a bit um and I actually uh am known for my cookies um I also um love to sing and Me I got too. into singing and um, just a little bit of karaoke here and there, uh, but okay. ended up actually being discovered um, and uh, was offered an, an opportunity to, um, to lead a band as a uh, lead singer. Um, and then the third thing is um, really paid close attention to like fitness and mind, body, spirit, um, life coaching and that kind of thing. So those are three three things that I um, I kind of lean into when I'm feeling lost um, or need some space or I just need to let loose. Um, and those three things that have really kept me grounded um, cyclically. Um, so you know, in some cases it's all about fitness and motivation and inspiring people and. Other times it's more I've got to be by myself and in my own thoughts, and, and so I'll go the baking route. Um, but I've got a pretty big personality for anybody who knows me, so uh, <laughs> when I get out there on stage, um, for anybody who's who's an athlete, it's like getting on the field and you leave everything on the field, and for me I leave everything on the stage. So it's sort of like um, 
when you're singing, you get on the stage. It's like Beyonce, she steps into Sasha Fierce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, <laughs> was I a whole different person into, all together. Yeah, I definitely transform into a whole different person. So I, I lead a, a dance band. So I'm up there, I'm singing, I'm rocking out, I'm dancing, um, connecting with people, um, creating memories for folks. And, and that to me is pretty right. awesome. You stated that um, that the, that Devin um, was tragically killed. Will you mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Because I know at that time Devin the second was not born. No, Devin the second was not born. Um, so when uh, Devin was was killed, uh, our life together was really just starting to take shape. Um, we had a new business that was booming and um, we just found out we had a baby on the way. Um, I was 11 weeks pregnant um, with our baby. Uh, I travel for a living. So you saw, you heard mm-hmm. that I was an executive with a health IT company. Um, so I was traveling. Um, I happened to be in Charlotte, North Carolina um, on a business trip. Had just shared the news with my boss that I was expecting and all these exciting things were, were coming together. And, um, that evening, uh, he was home with my two older boys, um, that he was a stepfather to, and, um, he'd done the homework and the whole routine and, um, fed them and, and he was taking a bike ride to go look at a boat, um, that he had his eye on. And um, let me know that he would be home in time to put the boys to bed. And um, unfortunately, he never made it home. Um, the boys uh, called me saying that he hadn't made it home. So I put them to sleep over FaceTime, um, knowing that I was going to be pretty mad at why he wasn't home, <laughs> but uh, doing what I needed to do as a mom and um, my, my anger turned to fear, um, turned into a pretty stressful evening. Um, I tried putting myself to sleep after having a conversation with one of my girlfriends on the phone. Um, and as I was dozing off, my phone rang and, um, I got the phone call from my pastor that, um, that he didn't make it home and. He wasn't coming home. He'd been killed um, and asked where I was and how quickly I could get home. Um, by far the worst night of my life. I can imagine because here it is, you're carrying a light and then you're getting the news that a life of my loved one, my mate, my soulmate, my laughing partner, <laughs> Um, has been killed tragically. And how yeah. has your faith strengthened you through this time, during that time, and how has it strengthened you now? Yeah, so um, my faith was tested um, very much at that time. Couldn't understand how God could let something happen to my family like that. Um I was angry at the world, to be honest. Um, and then I was like, what, what do I do now? How do I, how do I come out of this? How do I thrive from this? How do I, how do I survive? I went into survival right. mode. Um, and I immediately had to figure out, you know, my kids were home alone at one o'clock in the morning. You know, they were, eight and 10 years old. Um, so, you know, I had to talk to my pastor and coordinate my, my in-laws who had just received the worst news of their life. Um, I had right. to lean on them to go pick up, you know, my children and care for them until I could make it home. And, um, I work in technology and I had to call, and, you know, adjust my, my travel arrangements. And so I had to 
open my laptop and I couldn't remember control alt delete to unlock my computer. So my mind was just completely fried. Um, so that's why I say, I know I just kind of went into survival mode and then kind of went into this fog. Um, but I just focused on that. I had new life within me that, right. um, that my life was going to be shaped around him on my two other boys to show them that no matter what life throws at you, you can overcome it and you can come out of it. Uh, my, my slogan really from that day forward has been come, come back bigger, badder, bolder. And, um, that I needed to demonstrate that to my children, um, because life is going to knock you down when you least expect it when everything's going what you consider perfectly. Uh, it's going to give you a reality check and, um, you got to be prepared to kind of take those punches and, and keep moving. Um, but always be improving upon yourself. So, you know, when I came home and I, I made it home, um, I really just focused on taking care of them, taking care of myself. Um, and I failed miserably. Um, I failed miserably because I, I almost feel like half of me was no longer existing. Um, that was the fall. We were in, in that fall. <laughs> yeah. Just the and then, shock. <laughs> yeah. It, and you don't realize it until you're doing reflections much later on. There were certain things that I, um, that I, um, refused to, to do because it would, it was kind of a trigger, um, but my, my faith in God was absolutely tested. Um, right. I forced myself not to turn my back on God, but I questioned everything. Um, and then I, then my son was born, um, his namesake after his dad. So Devin Jones, the second, um, and really put a, a whole new focus and emphasis on the church and our faith. And I wish I was provided a, a meme, uh, believe it or not, that was mm-hmm. a light bulb moment for me. And it's, it's Jesus on his knee, um, reaching his hand out to a little girl who's holding on to a tiny teddy bear and he's reaching out for her to give the little teddy bear to him. And behind his back was a huge teddy bear that he was preparing to give to her in exchange. And it was a light bulb moment for me because where I was losing my, my Devin, my soulmate, my love, I was (laughs) being given brand new life and my son. Amen. Uncondition- unconditional love, uh, limitless love, um, a lifetime of happiness and a fresh start. Um, a book I could write from page one and it just completely changed my perspective. I understand that wholeheartedly. You mentioned your singing and dancing as outlets. Yeah, and um, and as the as we grieve, because I still grieve as I do this podcast, but it's healthy and it's healing. <laughs> um, it's healthy and healing to cry. Has E allowed or given herself time to or a chance to cry, kick, scream, dance in um, the rain? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I always been known as um, a pretty hard and rigid emotionless person. Um, I'm always Mm -hmm. the one you can come to and um, I'm kind of the backbone or the bulldog or, you know, I don't show emotion. And um, this experience completely broke me. Um, People who'd never seen me shed a tear in my entire lifetime watched me crumble which was hard for me to admit. Um, and it was something I blocked out for quite a while. Um, 
but they saw the depth of me when I was broken. Um, and two of those, two of those people were my kids. I never let my kids see me break or cry or, um, and, and they saw that. Um, and I saw confusion, like what's happening. Um, mommy doesn't cry. (laughs) Um, (laughs) so I, so I did my best to hold it back, um, from them, from seeing it. Um, and then my baby Devin, uh, I think he was about two years old. Maybe he was two and a half and he was starting to be a little chatterbox and he got to talking, <laughs> um, about dad and his dad in particular. And just the conversation broke me and I cried. And he had a completely different reaction by older two boys. His reaction was to actually cry with me and to and and hug mommy. And so I do allow myself to cry. Um, That's good. And I'm no I'm no longer ashamed of it. I think there was a part of me at, at many points in my life that was ashamed of of crying and not being able to deal with things. Um, But yeah, I, I cry. um, I scream. um, (laughs) I get real quiet and somber and um, retract, you know, kind of go back into like a reclusive state. Um, There's times of the year that are more triggers to that than, than others, of course. Um, but right. I'm able to manage it a little bit better so I, I can have those private moments and I kind of know when they're going to come so I can be by myself. <laughs> but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm no longer ashamed or afraid to, to show people that I feel. I feel right. just like everybody else. You know, sometimes... Um and I was listening to you state that you were emotionless. There sometimes there are things in our childhood or, or in our past or things that happen in relationship with other people that make us that way. And mm-hmm. in corporate America, sometimes you don't allow it to cry, I guess. <laughs> Not <Nope>. openly, <laughs> but behind closed doors. And you yeah. said you were, you know, you're an executive for um, a health IT company. So I know you have to be fully focused. You have to have your bulldog face <laughs> You have to have your bulldog face on at all times because he needs business. <laughs> right. Um, and you say you were in a grief fall. And, and I can't relate to the grief fall because there were times when I missed signing my daughter's paper paperwork for ninth grade. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, I didn't sign it. No, mom, you didn't. I'm like, I thought I did. You know, but I thank God that there were people in her life that were able to, um, look after her and, and, and make sure that those things got done because they knew I was, I had just lost my husband. It had just right. lost him that March and he, and all the school started in August. So you got March, April, May, just about four or five months and school starts. But I'm glad you were able to, um, you know, break that barrier of, of being emotionless in that aspect with the children because they needed to see my children always saw me cry. They heard me crying. They, they just saw me broke. And like you say, it, it breaks you. It takes you mm-hmm. and it puts you in a broken state. But with God on our side, we can make it. We can make it. How has your other two sons, I believe one is in college. Is, is one in college? Yeah. He just started his freshman year um, at college on a football scholarship. So. Yay. I haven't, I haven't um, found how, everything. I'm doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> how has, um, how has they dealt with, um, Devin's death? So my oldest one was 10 when he passed away. And, uh, I think he was much more in tune with what occurred to mommy. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't think he, I don't think he personalized it to himself more as okay. he saw how it impacted me. Um, and he grew up real fast. Um, 
he helped me take care of his younger brother. Um, when the baby was born, he, he was more of a father figure from jump street than he was a big brother. Um, All right. so he took, he took a lot of responsibility. Um, I think he saw himself as the man of the house at that age. Um, so that created some challenges later on, as you can imagine. Um, but I think it created a layer of resilience in him and uh, perseverance in him that, you know, his life wasn't uh, served him on a silver platter. And, you know, while we definitely live, have lived a very good and blessed life, um, his has also been littered with um, trials and triumphs. And, and it, I think it helped instill in him a work ethic and um, a level of responsibility that you don't see in, in most children. Um, right. You know, he, he, he leaned right into football. Um, Devin uh, was a semi-pro football player who was uh, being scouted by uh, NFL teams and was preparing for the combine. Um, so my oldest son witnessed that had a love for football um, and leaned into that, uh, you know, from discipline to conditioning to training to practice to games to, um, and, you know, now he's taking it to the next level and he's built dreams and, and goals around, around that. My younger one uh, was eight at the time. Um, I didn't really understand what had really happened just knew stuff was different. Mm-hmm. And even even now, he's 16. Um, he's my quiet one. Um, the thinker. He's, <laughs> he's, he's the thinker, but he's the heart. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's the one who is always watching and, you know, making sure that everybody's okay. Um He's the, he's the one that will sacrifice. So when I'm out and I've got a show and, you know, I get done performing at one in the morning and, and I'm walking in the house at two thirty or three o'clock in the morning, he's the one who's, <laughs> who's waiting up to make sure mommy got home safe before he turns off his light and goes to sleep. Uh, so it's impacted him, but just at a, in a very different way, much more of a, a nurturing, um, nurturing way. He reminds me of my grandson. Um, when my husband, Reginald, passed away, key mom was only three years old. And mm-hmm. from there, he talks about his papa's death. But what I've noticed in the last three to four years is how nurturing he is and how caring he is. And mm-hmm. he'll, he, he always, I'm going to stay with you tonight, me, mom, because you're home by yourself. <laughs> Like yeah. today, he his sister takes gymnastics, and he says, um, I, "I'm I'm going with my mama today." I said, "You're not staying with me." He said, "No, um, we need to give you a break because you've been e schooling with us for the last couple of weeks. We need to give you a break, and plus, you have a show tonight." I said, "Thank you." <laughs> Aww, so, I thought it was just the sweetest thing, and, and it brought to you know when you were talking about your son and who's now sixteen, it just brought to my memory, you know, to mind today about what he said and how nurturing because he's quiet, and he's always thinking. Um, have yep. you considered? Have Have you considered um, instilling in them to to keep a journal? I, I, I keep on keep a journal. I asked him, you know, to write his feelings down. Have they? Do they? Does anybody keep a journal? The one that's the uh, thing that you know of. Yeah, no. Um, I didn't keep a journal. I'm kind of happy I didn't. Um, <laughs> some of those things I just don't want to remember. Um, right. Nor do I want coming out. <laughs> um, so no, <laughs> that's not anything I've ever I've ever recommended. Um, okay. I'll definitely ponder that though, because I I think that could I think that could be uh, constructive. Um, you know, it, it's just, it is pretty amazing to watch your children, um, go through something like this. And while, you know, you're going through your own situation 
and it's a very selfish situation. I was very self-absorbed about my feelings and what it was doing to me and Mm -hmm. um, that in hindsight, I wish, I wish that I had had some of that forethought to, to give some of those recommendations to my children. Um, (laughs) But now my 16 year old, you know, is like I say, he's the nurturer of the family and I am very close with my in-laws, my, my moms and my daddy. Um, and my, my 16 year old, his name's Braxton. My Brax, um, spends my literally every, with Braxton. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he literally spends every day, uh, with, with my in-laws, um, working on, um, you know, home improvement projects or helping with the family business or, you know, just being present. Uh, and, and I love that, uh, about my middle son because that's a lot of who I am also. Like I'm a, I'm a very giving person. So I want to make sure everybody's taken care of and everybody's healthy and happy and uh, has everything that they need and, and to see that, through all of this, he's gleaned some of those um, moral values. is is really, really heartwarming to me. We have to gauge um, what a child can handle uh, dealing with Deb. And Devin is in second grade now. He's second yeah, grade. Tomorrow, second grade. Tomorrow is his first day of second grade. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Have second you grade, um, <laughs> second grade, eleventh grade, and college? So yes, I would. Change, I would not change it for the world. I wouldn't either. I, me, I, I'm the same exact way. I wouldn't change a thing about it. <laughs> right. Nothing, especially raising because you have three and I have three, so and I have the two grandchildren. And I, you have one grandson. Yes, so I, my grand. <laughs> yep, my grandson turned four months on Friday. Yep. Oh, congratulations! Have you been able to? Um, did you have you gauged at what age or stage you would talk to Devin about his dad as a person? Yeah. So. Um, I've really talked to to baby Devin um, Mm -hmm. about his dad right from the time that he was born. Um, And I know it probably sounds silly because what could a three-month-old understand, but um, I committed to him and to to Devin in heaven that he would be known. His memory would be cherished. His life would be honored, and his son would absolutely know who his daddy was, why I loved his daddy the way that I did, and share him with baby Devin as much as I could. Um, That was a commitment I made, you know. That's awesome. From the the beginning. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. we we got pictures all up over the house, um, which has caused some some tension with other situations, but I don't care. Uh, but yeah, there's you know there's pictures of um, of Big Devin. Um, we I have tried to do like a memorial type event um, periodically. Mm-hmm. So on the seventh anniversary of his passing. Um, we did a memorial barbecue, uh, Memorial Day weekend, oh. which happens to be around the date of his death. Um, and I had all of his friends from high school, from football, from the church, um, come and share stories with with baby Devin about about his dad. And I had memory boards where I just had hundreds of pictures of his dad and People could pick a picture and put it on the board and write something to baby Devin about 
um, Big a memory that they had with right. Big Devin. Um, okay. And I think that, you know, he didn't have an opportunity to meet his dad. Um, so it's my job to make sure that I do my best to, to keep his dad alive in, in thought and in memory and physical pictures uh, in, in you know, in storytelling and, and, and the like. So that's, you know, that is part of my purpose. Does little Devin talk about big Devin? Ask questions. He, yeah, he does. Um, they tend to be most random, uh, which wasn't expected. But there are <laughs> things. There's, there's even triggers with him. Um, if we go to a park um, and there's a dad playing with children, nothing will be said right then, but maybe on the drive home. Um you know, he'll have a comment, you know, I, I miss daddy. Um, or I really wish I had, I really wish I had a daddy. And I, you know, maybe you have a daddy. He's like, no, I know, I know my daddy's in heaven, but, you know, I, I really wish I had a daddy here on earth. Um, so there's definitely a void that he talks to me about. Right. Um, you know, and that, that will break me. That will break me real quick, um, you know. So they can be hard conversations. Sometimes it'll, you know, they'll be very basic questions like, you know, I'm trying to think of the most basic, but yeah, what was Daddy's favorite color? I know you mentioned that. Oh, earlier, yeah. Right. <laughs> what was Daddy's favorite yeah. color? Or, you know, his uh, music that he would listen to or why did he like motorcycles or, you know, so we, he mm-hmm. talked to me, he actually talked to me quite a bit about his dad. Um, and there's no subject that's off limits. There's not nothing right. that, you know, there's, there's no boundaries. Um, you know, everything is, is in the wide open. And I have a completely different relationship with my baby than, than I do my two older ones because we are bonded by, we are bonded by tragedy. We are bonded by grief. We are bonded by um, God's selection. And um, I truly believe that Big Devin gave me the best, the best part of him um, in my son. And I, and I firmly believe that God uh, blessed me with my children and with my purpose. And that's to continue to share the word or walk in his faith or right. um, be an inspiration or be completely vulnerable and transparent um, in a in an environment like we have tonight. Um, you know, I'm I'm absolutely unbreakable um, because I've already been broken. You can't break me any any more than I've already been broken. Um, so I will always come back bigger, better, bolder. That we all know. I love that when you said bigger, better, bolder. <laughs> the <Yep>. three Bs. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, when I read it, I was like, wow. I said, is that me secretly? <laughs> bigger, <laughs> better, bolder, but on a quieter level. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, but I there love is. That. Oh, there's, there's, absolute, there's life after loss. It's, right. Um. You know, and and everything in life is temporary and keeping things in perspective, you know, that you may be facing the most challenging time ever, things very unimaginable, but it's all temporary, you know, um, do your very best, stay persistent um, and stay true to yourself and you'll get through it. And that which you can't handle on your own, you know, give it to God and uh, pray on it, um, but just just Absolutely. hold hold very tight to faith. And I have, um, you know, I know. I commend you. I, um, you know, in that in that 
period of fog, I remember vividly um, my two boys having a woe for me kind of attitude. Like, this sucks. I hate my life. This is terrible. You know, very Mm -hmm. disgruntled. And in my fog, I was like, we're going through a really horrible time, but we still have it better than most, and we're going to give back. And I remember going to Little Caesars and going to downtown Baltimore and handing out pizza to the homeless (laughs) people. And when the kids are looking around and I got my pregnant belly out to the moon, they were very confused, like, why would you bring us down here? And I'm like, just hand out the pizza. Look at their smiles. Listen to their appreciation. Say you're welcome. And we got back in the car and I said, do you guys realize why I did this today? And they said, no. <laughs> like, they were <laughs> so so <cute>. They were confused. <laughs> it was an honest response. No, mom. Yeah, mom. yeah. they were very, being very honest. And I said, I said, yeah we are going through a really rough time and no life is not fair. And no, this is not how we pictured our life going, but we still can offer things to people who have even less than we do, who are in a, in a worse situation than even we are. We always have to be giving to people. And it took the focus away from what we were going through and and made us focus on others. And I think that that has also been very helpful. Um, You know, we give to charities and we gift to homeless shelters. And and it, yeah, we, we don't always have it the way we want it but we still can give because there's always somebody who's going through something worse. Oh, yes. And that is something that I've told my children. I said, somebody has a worse thought than we do. Always, always. And I love how you, you honor his memory with the memory boards and having a barbecue. <laughs> that gives me an idea because my husband loves to cook. And that gives me a very, very good idea for the upcoming holidays. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. It really does. Um, what steps are you taking or have taken to prepare, prepare you um, and Devin and your two sons for the future without Big Devin? Um. So I think a lot of a lot of that question is just ingrained in motherhood, right? Motherhood. It, a lot mm-hmm. of people, I remember a lot of people saying, wow, you are so strong. And they would be saying this when I felt incredibly weak and incredibly out of control, <laughs> incredibly not <laughs> strong. Um, and whatever they were witnessing, which I couldn't see it through their lens, through their filter. I knew I was doing because my audience was my children and failure's never been an option for me. Um, so I think a lot of it had to do with stand up, dust off your knees, put a smile on your face and keep moving. Every time the sun rises is a reminder that you've got a brand new day, a new opportunity, and you can do it better. You can approve upon your yesterday because you woke up. That's fantastic. Exactly. You know, (laughs) I I don't put too much pressure on long-term future. It's really about how do we just do better today than we did yesterday. How do we align ourselves with what our goals are, right? For example, my son, right, who's now in college playing, you know, football. Um, his goals are to to go as far with football as possible while getting, you know, free education to fall back on. Um, and he has said that since he was nine years old. 
So every day he's working towards those goals and he's improving upon his yesterday. Um, me personally, I'm a work in progress. So I, you know, my first and foremost is my children, you know, their environment, their home, um, providing for them. Um, so of course my work, right. My work affords me (laughs) all the things that my children need. And then when I've got, when I've got a moment, um, for myself, I go all in, I go all in, whether it's a show or, you know, baking cookies. And I know that there's people, you know, people listening to this show are like, she's baking. All right. <laughs> let me, let me send her a message. It's a stress I relief. My, I want my batch. Um, <laughs> you know, I want but, my batch. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's all about finding a way, you know, it, it through all of this, I've, I've, you know, been laid off due to restructuring. I, um, <laughs> you know, we've got COVID. So there's, there's a challenge around every corner. It's all in how, how you address and approach those challenges because every challenge can actually turn into an opportunity if you allow it to. Um, and I just have always said, you know, as a single mom, I'm their example. If I can't do it and if I can't show them how to do it, how do I expect them to do it when they get on their own? Uh, so I'm just relentless. Very amazing, awesome, (laughs) exuberant, and enterprising E. I usually end this show with a prayer, but I want to leave the listening audience with these foods for thoughts about grief of any sort. Believe that you are going to be okay. Believe that you can survive and thrive. Believe that you can reinvent your life. Be okay when there is not going to be an answer. And I love Eve. You will come out bigger, better, and bolder. E, I thank you so much for being my guest tonight. I've taken so much in from you. I've gleaned from you. There are parts of what you were talking about that um, hit personal with me. I was like, God, I allowed a, a parallel in here, you know, um, mm-hmm. with our children and how we dealt with the grief. Who's going to be the role model for our children if we don't set the right. example? Right. I thank you so much, and I will reconnect with you for um, to hear you sing the karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> and how do I get my cookies? <laughs> Absolutely. So I appreciate the invite. Uh, feel super blessed uh, for my friend Jerry for connecting us and extending thank the invite. You. Me too. Uh, we'll make sure that we send you some links to uh, some singing and some baking and see where you guys can get some cookies and some tunes and some good times and just, you know, stay blessed and uh, stay true to your faith, stay true to yourself. Thank you for tuning in to Pearls with Veronica and my guest Elizabeth E. on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. Good night. The Bible says the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and a horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Join us every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media and Spreaker Radio of the Pearls of Veronica as her guests share their journey as they try to accept their loss. They come together for transparency and comfort. Join us right now, right here on Positive Power Double XI Christian Media. Thank you for tuning in.